Hello. My name is Pei and today we're gonna go over the newest boss edition in RuneScape called Moose of Peril. The content is mostly aimed towards mid-level accounts as well as new people who are just introducing themselves to PvM mechanics. It's a great addition to the game and it offers a lot of PvM basics such as timing, movement, positioning as well as keeping an eye on different mechanics. One of the best things about this encounter is that it's a pretty chill fight with a lot of breathing space in between boss rooms which really makes this a great side hustle for people who like to do other things while having RuneScape open on the other screen. Yeah. Multitasking. The rewards are pretty cool as well. They've introduced a bunch of new sets with each having their own special effects which just adds to the overall variety of gear. Moons of Peril have only one requirement and that's completion of the Perilous Moons quest. The only tricky part about this is that you actually have to kill all three bosses in order to complete the quest. According to the RuneScape wiki it is recommended to have 70 plus in attack, strength and defense which is pretty reasonable considering some of these bosses can pierce through your defense like a hot knife through butter. I had 75 defense on my first attempt and I could really feel some of these hits. Talking about low defense and high hitting bosses, let's take a look at the gear I used for this encounter. Now, I want to emphasize that these are probably not the best in slot pieces of gear, rather a combination which I found comfortable using. Since moons can hit pretty hard, I decided to go for high defense gear, more specifically thorax. They are really cheap and accessible, but basically any of the high defense barrels equipment should be fine. If you have the means, of course, you should probably go for the standard Bandas face guard from Oridale stick. As far as weapons are concerned, you need all three types of attacks, stab, slash and crush. This is where all the fun begins and you can basically test out all the different weapons and you know just have some fun with it. My weapons of choice were the new zombie axe and the fang. I'd use the zombie axe for slash and cross styles and fang for stabbing. I don't want to dwell too much on this topic but you can check out all the weapons and their styles on the official runescape wiki. Just sort the table in accordance to the attack style that you want and go from there. Most of the weapons are good for this encounter. Some are better than the others but overall it's a mid-level encounter and you should be able to use a weapon of your liking. Just make sure to have all three different attack styles. So when we put all of this together this is what my final gear looks like. Thorax, fire cape, fury Amulet, Dragon Defender, Peros Gloves, Dragon Boots and the Light Bear. I also have two spec weapons that I had in my bank, Dragon Mace and a DDS. These are certainly not necessary but when paired with the Light Bear Ring they can deal some consistent spec damage and just add a bit of variety to the rotation. You always wanna bring a pestle and mortar, rope, butterfly net and a big fishing net. These items are needed in order to get food and prayer pots from the caverns. The quest will guide you to set up camps in all three caverns and you'll have to use a talisman in order to find just use the wiki quick guide up until the point where you need to fight the three bosses. Once you find her and hand out all the quest items, a tooltip for the three moons will appear and you're now eligible to fight them. As a tradition, let's start off with some juicy deaths because that's the only way you're able to learn this game. We're not machines and you don't have to be tick perfect and as long as you have fun that's all that matters. One thing to note here is that dying to the moons is just like your regular death in runescape. You need to retrieve the items from death for a fee. I don't really know that much about Iron Man status but as I read up on the internet, when you die on a UM your stuff is dropped in the main room of the dungeon in a pile on the ground. Source, trust me bro. There are a couple of different routes which you can take but the most common ones are yellow, blue, red or blue, yellow, red. I'm going to show you the route which I took and that is yellow into blue into red. You start off by going to the northeastern cavern and from there you're entering the yellow moon area. Once that's done you're going to be spawned in the northwestern cavern. From there you're entering the blue moon area. Once the boss is dead you're gonna get teleported out to the southwestern prison which then leads to the red moon area. Once the boss is dead you're gonna get spawned in the prison area again and from there just walk into the treasure room. From there, you're back into the yellow moon cavern and the cycle just repeats itself. Now, let's do one full cycle with all the bosses, a textiles and mechanics. So make sure you got all your cooking and fishing tools and navigate to the northeastern camp. Once there, don't forget to refresh your run energy. Take the herblore supplies from crates, two of these vials are enough. Collect moonlight grubs from the grubby sapling and crush them by using your pestle and mortar. Use the moonlight paste on your vials to create a moonlight potion. This potion provides a huge boost to your combat test and restores prayer points as well. Move on to the fishing spot, fill your inventory with brims and cook them. You're going to do this on only once and you'll see why. Go into the boss area, equip your weapon of choice and make sure that your attack type is set to stab as the yellow moon boss is weak to stab. If you have them unlocked you want to use chivalry or piety all the time for all three bosses. I have that set up on my quick prayer so it's easier to navigate between that and the spec attack. Upon entering you might immediately notice two things. There are other people as well and you're spawned in the middle of an attack. Don't be mistaken, this is not a group fight, it's a solo encounter and other players are there just visually, they're fighting their own battle. I think this is really cool and more bosses should have this simple. 
implemented. If you ever get stuck with a certain mechanic, you can always just follow the other player. Okay, all of these bosses have two special attacks. The big ball, or as we humans like to call it the moon, is one of the eclipse moon specials and basically what you need to do is just hide and walk alongside the ball to avoid taking damage, like so. You can walk like the guy next to me or you can run, impatiently. It doesn't really matter, as long as you're not taking damage, all is good. Once the phase is done, all you need to do is stand on the mark tile and attack the boss. This will repeat 3 times until there's another special. If you notice, I took some damage here but I know he doesn't do enough to KO me so I'd rather rack up some damage and not lose ticks just to heal myself. You can always heal yourself in between phases like so. The other special attack is just a game of whack-a-mole where you need to click the tile where the boss spawns on your screen. Repeat this until you need to stand on the marked tiles again. Rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. Once that's done, you're gonna get teleported into the northwestern cavern which leads to the blue moon boss. In this area you will refill your run energy and for your future run you're going to get food and potions from this area. The reason why you wanna get food from here is it's just a little bit faster, nothing else. You can still catch fish if that's your preferred way of making food. So in here you have to set up traps and rustle the bush in order to catch lizards. Each lizard when cooked will give two or more pieces of food so you can see how this is kind of faster than catching fish in the yellow moon area. Ok, we're ready to fight the blue moon, equip your weapon of choice and make sure to set it to crush since this boss is really weak to crush. I have my crush spec weapon ready as well to throw in some opening shots. As with the previous boss, always stand in the marked tiles whenever they appear. During the first special, you need to light both of these braziers without taking damage from the freezing storms. If you take damage, your run will get automatically disabled and you will need to re-enable it again. The damage is minuscule so don't worry about it. In the second special, boss will spawn pillars and highlight the one which you need to attack. Your weapon is frozen in there and you need to use your legs and fists to get it out. All you need to do is attack the pillar and move away from the AoE damage. You can attack twice and then move aside, like so. That's it. That's the boss. Once the blue moon is dead, you're gonna get teleported into the prison area, where you can refill your run energy and evaluate your food and potions. And your life. Remember, if you ever get out of food, just run back to the previous area and stack up on more. Ok, so we're ready to fight the blood moon boss, equip the weapon of your choice and make sure that its textile is set to slash since this boss is extremely weak to slash. If you have a spec weapon, make sure that it's also set to slash. Like all the other bosses, this one has two specials as well. The first one being this barrage of blood which you just need to avoid. Most of the time, you're just going to stand still. Stand on the marked tiles, attack the boss and get ready for his second special. The boss will spawn jaguars and mark the one which you need to attack. You'll also notice that a blood pool spawns behind you as well, so you need to dodge the jag attack and the blood pool simultaneously. Once the blood pool has fully formed, click onto it for one tick and move back to the jag, like so. This is going to take some practice, but after a few attempts it becomes ingrained in your muscle memory. Blood Moon can hit pretty hard and heal for a huge amount of HP, so don't hesitate to heal yourself and have yourself topped all the time. Once he's dead, restore your run energy and move into the treasure room. Collect your new shiny weapon and go back into the yellow cavern and repeat the process. As you can see, I still have a lot of supplies left over, so there is no need for me to catch fish, I'll just kill the Eclipse Moon and then refill my inventory with lizard from the Blue Moon area. As far as the loot goes, I did around 100 of these runs and the total value of my loot is somewhere north of 12 mil. I also got a lot of set pieces which is really cool as well. It's not the best money maker out there but it's definitely one of the most fun encounters that I had for now. It has a lot of variety and all the weapon switching and you being able to see other players and interact with them is just a really nice touch and like I said before I just wish they implemented in more areas because it's really really cool. While I'm grinding my way towards Gauntlet hopefully I give this a try since it's not that hard and the set pieces are actually fun to play with as well. Again thank you for watching and if you liked it give my other guys a go as well and what can I say have a good one. Thank you.